Hello, we are In Conversation with the Sanford School, a podcast from the T. Denny Sanford School of Social and Family Dynamics at Arizona State University, designed to showcase timely and informative insights from leading faculty, researchers, and other experts which impact the ever-changing social world we live in. Here at the Sanford School, we recognize that the lands where we are hosting this conversation at Arizona State University belong to the Maricopa and Pima peoples, and we are privileged that we can welcome you to today's conversation. In today's podcast, we're excited to be in conversation with our local expert to discuss what it's like to become an online teacher. Our guest today is Dr. Bev Carlson Landy, a lecturer and Barrett Honors College faculty from the T. Denny Sanford School of Social and Family Dynamics here at ASU. She has more than 10 years experience in teaching online where she is dedicated to providing leadership, increasing student success holistically, and collaborating with administration, faculty, staff, and students to continue to improve the university experience. Dr. Carlson Landy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, John. Well, it's great to have you here. I understand that uh, since you're teaching online, you're remote. What great state of the United States are you in today? I live in Texas. Wonderful. A little more humid there than we are here in Arizona, I would imagine. It is, just a little bit. Well, I uh, really appreciate you having a, an opportunity to carve some time out in your schedule to uh, join our podcast just to have a conversation about what it's like in this online teaching environment. There's so many different sides to this, um, and we're just glad to have your insight and know that uh, we appreciate all that you've been doing in this space. So thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. So we're going to get going with some questions. Are you ready to go? I sure am. Okay. Uh, so first off, uh, what was your path to becoming a 100% online professor? Well, my, my path through uh, college was not necessarily traditional. I started college many, many years ago when I was 18. And then when I got to just over 100 credits, I dropped out and thought, I'll get back to it. Well, I didn't get back to it for more than 20 years. So in the meantime, I had my children. I raised my kids. I had a variety of different jobs. Um, most of them involved some form of teaching. And when I was um, literally driving down the road one day and I heard on the radio, Do you, have you always wanted to finish your college degree? Here's your opportunity in our online degree program. And I thought, wait a minute, maybe that's me. And it was a local university, Texas Women's University. They're located in Denton, Texas. So I went up, I checked it out, and I thought this is exactly what I need. I need to finish my undergraduate degree. So it was going to be online. So... That was quite an experience, having a huge gap in my education of more than 20 years. And then coming back, I'd always been a face-to-face -face student, and I came back and I was 100% online. So um, I dealt with a lot of the things that online students deal with, a lot of the things that non-traditional students deal with. But I quickly learned that online could be really rich and a great learning experience. It could also be terrible. So I kind of had the best of online learning and the worst of online learning in the few classes that I needed to graduate. When I decided to continue on and get my master's and then my PhD, I became very committed to working in the online environment and learning how to develop classes that were better for students, that met their needs, that responded to their needs, and that had a sense of community because that's one of the things that, that you feel um, that you miss in the online environment. So um, I taught both face-to-face -face and online, but that was basically how I, I went about it. I, I went through some um, Quality Matters training and I, I was a Quality Matters reviewer since uh, 2010. I became a master reviewer in 2012. And those, they help you structure your classes according to research and how to best reach students and how the students can have the best, most enriching experience. So um, after that, I actually didn't go directly into teaching. I ran a grant program at Texas Women's University and it was a student success program. Um, that program was uh, funded through the Comprehensive Student Success Program. Um, and 
we developed a, a supplemental instruction and tutoring program. And so I got very interested in student success. And of course, because I had the interest in online, not only did we do supplemental instruction and tutoring face-to-face, -face, but I developed an online program for it as well. I'm really proud to say that all of these years later, that program, when it, I started that in 2012, it is still running in the math department at Texas Women's University. And before I left the program, we got a, um, a recognition of excellence from the Texas Higher uh, excuse me, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. So it was a fantastic experience, and I took a lot of that learning that I did through that program into my online classes. Wow, that's uh, quite a few accomplishments that you have in that span. Um, I do think that it is great to hear uh, a story of someone that has engaged in the online um, educational uh, environment and enjoyed it enough to continue on. And there's a lot of people out there. Uh, of course, there's you know, some pain points in, in changing today um, in, in moving to this online environment, uh, but you are proof that uh, that the online environment can, can be successful. And uh, I love seeing and hearing your passion for, for that. Uh, so uh, you have all this great experience. Uh, you, you left the school where you were before. Uh, you know, when did you come here to the Sanford School uh, at ASU? And um, what are the courses that you teach? Well, I joined uh, the Sanford School in 2016. I was very excited when I was offered a full-time lecture position, which meant I had a full-time job teaching, which was what I really wanted to do. But it also allowed me to be remote, which was very important. My husband's job was not transferable, so I was able to be remote and do what I loved. And the first, I can't actually remember what I taught the very first semester, but I know um, among the classes that, that I have always taught, and I taught these at other universities as well, was Sociology of Deviance. It's one of my favorite classes to teach. Um, but I've also taught work in the workplace, another class that's a favorite of mine. I have several favorites. Uh, I, I'm very much into um, the sociology of work and organizations, so that's kind of a natural fit for me. Um, technology and society is another class that I really enjoy teaching, uh, courtship and marriage. And probably one of my most recent favorites has been health and illness. And part of that is because of the current situation we're in with the pandemic. Um, this is a great opportunity for students to look at the situation that we're experiencing through a sociological lens and better understand how people are affected, why people are affected, and how maybe we can come up with better policies in the future. Well, you certainly have a lot of experience in teaching a variety of courses, and the one you just mentioned sounds a great interest, so I'm uh, looking forward to learning more uh, about that. Uh, since we're staying on the topic of teaching in an online environment, I believe you also have some experience teaching in a face-to-face -face environment, which you know most of us are all accustomed to. That being said, can you tell me some differences, uh, some similarities, or um, you know how would you describe the difference between the face-to-face -face, face -face teaching environment and the online teaching environment? Well, I love teaching face-to-face. -face. I, I think most teachers will tell you they just love being in the room. There's um, a synergy. The synchronous environment is very invigorating. Discussions, live discussions are great. Um, but I also think that online can be just as valuable, just as great. So um, one of my areas of interest was community and technology, and that kind of led me to the, the, uh, the idea of online and community building. Um, so, in some of my research, I um, was willing to challenge some established community, sociology of community um, scholars and, and discuss with them their position that you can't have community online, and I believe you could have community online. Um, and Tony's, one of our, our theorists, our sociological theorists, talks about this sense of community Gemeinschaft. And I think you can develop it, but you have to work at it. Um, I think there's advantages too to online learning. For example, if I record a lecture, my students have that lecture for the rest of the class. They can listen to it over and over, they can take notes on it a couple times, whatever it is that they need to do. Similarly with discussions, discussions become semi-permanent. 
they're there if the students come back. The asynchronous environment is also beneficial to so many of our students who are working, they have families, they have partners, they have all of these other commitments and they're trying to complete their education. So being able to be asynchronous as opposed to synchronous is a huge advantage for them. I think online really gives a, a wider variety of students an opportunity to complete their educations. So I, I just, it, I don't know if I have a favorite place to teach. I love doing face-to-face, -face, but online is just where I've kind of committed myself because I do think it's a valuable experience and we can do it very well. And all of my colleagues at the Sanford School are amazing to work with and they are all experts in the online environment. Yeah, well, we've certainly had to learn um, a little faster these days <laughs> on how to be good at that. Uh, so while we're talking about on online teaching, which is something that you, that you do, you mentioned we have faculty that are, are great. There's also the student side uh, of taking online courses. There's got to be some concerns out there for someone that's new to this, uh, that is used to face to face, that has to come now into the online teaching environment. Can you speak to some of those concerns on what those students might have? You know, I think the number one concern, and it was something I felt myself as a student, was this feeling that you're all by yourself. You're sitting at your computer. And even though you're aware that there's other people in class, you still feel like you're alone. And so that's a, that's, um, it's an isolating feeling. Uh, you're just by yourself in this class. I think because of that feeling of isolation, students are very hesitant to approach a faculty member. So in face-to-face -face classes, you always see the students go up after class and there's a big crowd around the students because they have a few questions. We don't have that same ability in online classes. So I found it's really important to keep encouraging students to reach out if you need help. Um, the other thing I would say is they have some technology issues. You, you mentioned this before we got started. Um, learning a platform is not easy. It can be overwhelming. And like myself, when I came back to school after such a, a break, the idea of being in an online class was pretty terrifying. So um, you know, we have to mitigate those things. And I, I think the other thing that students um, really struggle with is time management. They, um, they are committed. They have all of these other roles that they're playing. I used to talk about the hats that they wear. So their parents and their students and their employees, they might be employers. You know, they have all of these other things and they're trying to carve out time for their education. And sometimes life happens and it all blows up or you forget a deadline. Um, so I think those are the things that students really kind of struggle with. And those are, I meet with students the most often about time management. How do I manage my time? effectively? How can I be successful when I have all of these things I'm juggling? Well, I can see that students would have uh, a variety of concerns, as you, as you just pointed out. So that being said, as someone that is passionate about teaching online, what are some strategies or, you know, tricks of the trade, if you will, that, that you bring to your classroom that uh, helps create that healthy learning environment for students? You know, one of the things that I knew I wanted to do when I came to ASU is I wanted to incorporate the best practices for online teaching, as well as some of the student success strategies that I developed in the supplemental instruction program at Texas Women's University. So traditionally, I used to ask my students how things were going for them at various points in the semester. Um, one of my colleagues here at ASU, Dr. Haskin, uh, Dr. Jennifer Haskin, shared a journal assignment with me that was similar to mine, but more specific and more formal. And I thought, this is a much better way where I can get a snapshot of how my students are doing. So I've revised this assignment several times. And in all of my classes, my students, well, all but one, um, they have three journal assignments. The first one is pretty much goal setting, a little bit of introduction, a little bit of goal setting. And now I've added some questions about stress level and would you like to meet with me? Um, just because our students are experiencing an unusual amount of stress currently. Uh, the second journal kind of beats off the first journal and I say, so how are you doing on those goals? Where do you need help? How can we support you? And then the third one, I revisit the goals and say, how were you successful? And at various points, I also add things like, what could I have done differently? So at the end, I like to ask them, how could I have better supported you what worked for you basically in the class. So that's one of the things that I like to do. 
Um, the other thing that I did, and I started this last fall, um, I wanted to do it, but honestly, John, it's funny. I don't like being recorded. I don't like making movies of myself or videos of myself. So mm -hmm. I hesitated to do it. Um, and occasionally I would do like a little video for the students, but I just was uncomfortable doing it. So last fall in 2019, Stacy Flores, who's one of our PhD candidates uh, in sociology, she was assigned to work with me as a TA. Um, we had several discussions about student success and the kind of things I was interested in doing. And she just kind of took off with this idea of a tip of the week. And she said, I'm willing to do it. Well, that's all I needed was for mm -hmm. someone else to do it. So she started recording tips of the week for one of my classes and the students loved them. They were relatively informal. Some days she'd be sitting in front of the MU, some days she'd be in her office. So they were showing students who weren't familiar with the ASU campus what ASU was like, which was kind of fun for them, but it gave them valuable tips for how to be more successful in class. So I knew, I, I kind of backed myself into a corner I offered these through Stacy, and now I was going to have to continue doing them when she was no longer working with me. So in January, I did a few more, you know, more than I had done in the past, but still not weekly. And then in March, when kind of our world turned upside down in the U.S. and we all became remote, I knew that I just needed to get over my fear and I needed to get over my discomfort and I needed to support the students better. And I knew this was a great way to reach them. So I started doing weekly tips of the week. And as my hair grew in and it was no longer red, which it may have had a little help getting red, but I could no longer do that. Um, it came in white, which was surprising. So I thought I can't deal with that. So I dyed it blue and I thought, I wonder what my students are gonna think. Well, they thought it was great. They thought it was funny. I think it made me more human. Um, I talked honestly to them through the tips about the struggles that all of us were going through. And again, emphasize that idea of community. So um, that's been a really valuable tool and something that I'll continue as long as I teach. Um, the students are, the, excuse me, the tips are the way I make a connection with my students and it's a personal connection. I invite them to meet with me. I make fun of my hair. My dogs bark during some of them and I introduce my dogs. Um, tell them stories about my dogs chasing rabbits. And, you know, this, I think it helps the students understand that we do have a life outside of our computer and we can share it. Um, the other thing I sometimes do is I'll just do a little pop-up extra credit. So they might have a pop-up extra credit, like some of my students may have some this week, for what makes you happy. And it's just share something that makes you happy on the discussion board this has been a great way to build a sense of community. And I think as long as students realize that we are our own little community, we can get through just about anything together. And so that's how I approach my semesters every semester. Well, it's been a pleasure and you've been so uh, approachable, even in the time that I've known you um, right from the start. So uh, I have a sense that the students must just love taking your class. I'm sure more and more will, will sign up uh, to take your classes, and I love the blue hair. It's definitely working. I know some of our audio-only listeners won't, can't see it, but uh, I, I'm very impressed, and I love the look. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Carlson Landy, thank you so much for taking time out today and for all that you do to help create an online learning environment that is uh, healthy and beneficial to students, and we appreciate you sharing your, your tips and tricks with us. And we look forward to talking to you at a, in a future podcast. Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure. All right. You have a great day and stay uh, nice and cool there in Texas. All right. You too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Connect with us and get access to all of our podcasts by visiting thesanfordschool.asu.edu forward slash podcast, where you will also find links to all of our social media channels. This conversation has come to an end, but our work here continues.